हेलो एवरीवन वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू आई टी एल एस अकेडमी वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू इंडिया लार्जेस्ट ऑनलाइन लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म आई टी एल एस अकेडमी द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर इज एसेसिंग ह्यूमन स्टेम सेल सेफ्टी assessing human stem cell safety very first point is the isolation of human stem cells offers the promise of a remarkable array of novel therapeutics efforts to analyze and assess the safety of using human stem cells in the clinical setting are vitally important to this endeavor next point is transplanted human stem cells are dynamic biological entities that interact intimately with and are influenced by the physiology of the recipient before they are transplanted cultured human stem cells are maintained under conditions that promote either the self renewing expansion of undifferentiated progenitors or the acquisition of differentiated properties indicative of the phenotype the cells will assume next point assessing human stem cell safety requires the implementation of a comprehensive strategy each step in the human stem cell development process beginning with identifying and evaluating suitable human stem cell sources must be carefully scrutinized being able to trace back from the cell population prepared for transplantation to the source of the founder human stem cells also allow each safety checkpoint to be connected one to the other here in this diagram you can see assessing the safety of stem cells the steps are first is a generation followed by expansion expansion further followed by manipulation and this manipulation further followed by pre clinical evaluation this pre clinical evaluation will result in engraftment and follow up the summary of all these steps is assessment of genetic stability phenotypic profiling analysis of biomarkers to track differentiated status and bio distribution
weaving a stem cell safety net first point a diversity of opinion exists among researchers about the feasibility of initiating pilot clinic clinical studies using human stem cells some are of the view that it is reasonable to expect within the next 5 years that human stem cells will be used in transplantation settings to replace dead or dying cells within organs such as the failing heart or the genetically modified human stem cells will be created for delivery of a therapeutic genes next point clinical studies involving the transplantation of blood restoring or hematopoietic stem cells have been under way for a number of years reconstituting the blood and immune system or defense system of our body through stem cell transplantation is an established practice for treating hematological malignancies such as leukemia and lymphoma although precedent exist for the clinical use of human stem cells there is considerable reluctance to proceed with clinical trials involving human stem cells derived from embryonic and fetal sources safety assurance begins with adequate donor screening first point whether human stem cells are of embryon embryonic or fetal or adult origin donor sources must be carefully screened routine testing should be done to guard against the intervent transmission of infectious diseases next point this is arguably the case when human stem cells intended for a transplantation are derived from an allogenic donor that is someone other that the recipient and especially if the cells are obtained from a master cell bank that has been established using a human embryonic stem or human embryonic germ cells 
I hope you all are familiar with these words that is a human embryonic stem cells and a human embryonic germ cells because we have taken a long session on these two topics. The use of molecular genetic analysis could detect a mutation in the gene for alpha synuclein. This particular gene is known to be responsible for the rare occurrence of early onset Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease we have also studied in, in our session of autoimmunity. If you want to know about this disease more and more you can go through that session also. The number of genes known to be directly responsible for causing disease or anomalous physiological functions is relatively small. To ensure the integrity uniformity and reliability of human stem cell preparations intended for clinical use. It is essential to demonstrate that rigorously controlled standardized practices and procedures are being followed in establishing and maintaining a human stem cell lines in culture. Culturing human stem cells requires the use of formulated liquid media supplemented with growth factors and other chemical substances that promote cellular replication and govern the differentiation of the cultured human stem cells. Alternatives to culturing on a feeder layer of animal cells improve safety. And the very first point on this slide is an issue unique to the culturing of human embryonic stem and embryonic germ cells involves the use of mouse embryonic fibroblast feeder cells to keep the embryonic cells in a proliferating undifferentiated condition. Human embryonic stem and embryonic germ cells are seeded directly onto a bed of irradiated mouse feeder cells. Coming to our next point, xenotransplantation that is the use of organs tissues and cells derived from animals to treat human diseases. 
the principal concern of xenotransplantation is the unintended transfer of animal viruses into humans detailed characterization of human stem cell populations reinforces the safety net first point identifying the cells that make up an human stem cell population intended for clinical study requires identifying cells exhibiting the desired phenotype within the preparation as well as those that do not this poses considerable challenges because human embryonic stem cells and human embryonic germ cells have the capacity to give rise to all differentiated cell types next point on the basis of the complex biological properties of human stem cells including their potential to differentiate along multiple lineages and to give rise to a variety of cell types it is expected that the characterization of stem cell preparations will require a panel of orthogonal assessment once the purity profi profile has been established for a population of human stem cells generated using standardized procedures deviations that occur outside what is expected due to normal biological variations serve as a harbinger this is i am telling you this serve as harbinger that significant and possibly deleterious changes may have occurred such alterations could reflect the introduction of genetic mutations as a consequence of culture conditions used to promote expansion and to induce differentiation of the progenitor cell population what is progenitor cell population i hope you all know let me recall you 
प्रोजीन ईटर सेल प्रोजीन ईटर सेल्स आर अ टाइप ऑफ सेल्स दैट ऑन डिविजन गिव्स राइज टू टू काइंड ऑफ स्पेशलाइज्ड सेल्स these both cells will be specialized this is the work of progenitor cell this is the property of progenitor cells this is a very important slide because in uh, here some important concepts are given proof of concept toxicity testing and evaluation of proliferative potential proliferative potential is a capability to differentiate into various cell types this uh, evaluation of this proliferative potential in animal models are important to the assessment of human stem cell safety so let us see some points the very first point is a critical element of the safety net is the transplantation of human stem cells what is the transplantation transplantation is a process of transfer of cells from one person to another person so this transplantation into animals to demonstrate that the therapy does what it is supposed to do that is this will be proof of concept and to assess toxicity chemical surgical and immunologic methods are used to damage neurons induce diabetes stimulate heart attacks stroke and hypertension or compromise organ function coming to the next point human stem cells must be transplanted into animal models of human disease questions about the use of embryonic compared with adult stem cells with respect to robustness i hope you all know what is robustness so comparison with respect to robustness and durability i hope you all also know what is durability should be addressed in animal transplantation model what are two important points that this one is robustness and another one is durability these are the things that must be checked in a, uh, in animal model next point 
from the perspective of toxicology the proliferative potential of undifferentiated human embryonic and human embryonic germ cells these are human embryonic stem cells stem cell is left here human embryonic stem cells and human embryonic germ cells evokes the greatest level of concern undifferentiated embryonic stem cells are not considered as suitable for transplantation due to the risk of unregulated growth if these are fully uh, if we talk about this point if these are hum human embryonic stem cell if these are differentiated if these are differentiated then these will do proper growth or we can say it a regulated growth but of uh, if these are not properly differentiated or we can say it these are undifferentiated so these will do unregulated growth this point must be taken into concern before the transplantation of human embryonic stem cell or a human embryonic germ cells because these undifferentiated stem cell will cause unregulated growth that is not good for a good transplant so thank you very much everyone for watching this session our topic ends here follow itls academy on various social media platforms like instagram facebook twitter youtube whatsapp and linkedin guys subscribe our youtube channel itls academy and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever there is an upload you can also get our app on google play store so thank you very much everyone thank you very much for watching this session like it share it and subscribe our youtube channel for any help or query you can call us on our helpline number and you can also visit our website so thank you very much again